Hi again. Here we are to talk about JavaScript, everybody's favorite subject. Um, in the last couple videos, I talked about um, you know objects and arrays and variables, and I'd like to follow that up with a little more information, um, you know, on how you're going to use this. This is not you know an exhaustive, detailed discussion. Really, I'm trying to cover the material that you'll need to understand in order to follow the the other tutorial that I did on parse. So, for the people that don't have these basic skills, they can catch up with these videos and then uh, and then do the other the other tutorial, right? Um, so, you know, here I've created an array and an object, okay? I'm going to move these two together here and put them up at the top like that. And, uh, you know, and then I, I console logged a bunch of the information, you know, so we could see it in the, in the JavaScript console. I'm going to remove that, okay? And then I'll, I'll just leave this extra push. Maybe I'll, I'll move this up to here. Right, so now, you know, here I've, actually, let's even get rid of that. So here's what we got. Um, I have uh, an array with some names in it, and then here, you know, I added a fourth name to the array. And then down here, I have an object that has some, some properties, right? It's got three properties. So one of the things that you'll want to do is when your program has an array, or an object, you'll want to access every item inside that array or object, okay? And, you know, in this situation, I know that there are four items in names, and I know there are three items in object, and I can see what their, what their, value, what their property names are. But in some situations, you won't be able to see that. So imagine that, you know, you're getting information off the internet, like you're loading, you know, a Twitter feed or you're loading something from your database or you're, you know, you're just getting stuff from some other place and it's it's not sure exactly what the properties are or maybe the properties, you know, there's a lot of them and it's really hard to keep track of all of them, right? And, you know, even here <clears throat> in the array example, you can see I have three items in the original array, but somewhere along the way, you know, I added a fourth item, right? And that might happen, you know, outside of the scope of, you know, the initial list, right? I may, some items may be added or removed, right? So in those cases, what you want to do is you want to be able to um, have JavaScript search through this element, you know, the, the, the array or the object, and then find every item in there, right? And uh, here's how we can do that. So let's talk about a loop, okay? So this is the structure for a loop. Okay, so the loop begins with uh, with four, and then there's the parentheses, and then we have the curly brackets. So, you know, four says, let's repeat four X number of times, right? And in the parentheses, we set up the condition for the looping. And in the, uh, the curly brackets, we say the block of code that is going to be repeated with each loop, okay? So how do we use that? Let's do a quick example. So, you know, there, there's a couple ways to do the loop, okay? So I'm going to just talk about the for loop, and I'm going to do two examples that are, that are different, and they're both, they're both similar, but they're, they're different how they're set up, okay? So I'll say for, and then I define a variable, and I'll use i here, and we can give it a value of 0. And then I follow with the semicolon, and this, is, this first part here is the initializer, and it's like saying, you know, we're going to initially start with this variable, and this variable is going to be the variable that we count with when we count the number of times we're going to loop, okay? So this variable is going to change over time with each time we execute the code in the code block. So I'll say for, you know, var i equals zero. That'll be, this will be the variable we're counting with, and this is the initial value for it. And then I'll say let's keep counting while i is less than five. Okay, so the second part here is the, uh, the condition for the count, right, or for the loop. So, you know, <clears throat> we're going to be looping through this block of code here um, as long as this condition is true. So as long as i is less than 5, then, you know, we're going to execute this code block here one more time. And we'll be putting some code in there in a moment, right? So we start at 0, and we loop to something less than five. So in this case, you know, any number less than five, and then we'll repeat the loop, right? So, uh, 
you know, the, the last part here, I'm going to type I++, right? And this is the increment. So this means like every time we execute the code block here, what do we do with I so that it, you know, finally reaches this condition? Okay, because if, if I can never reach that condition, then the computer will just loop forever, and you'll actually get an error. The browser will see like after, you know, 10,000 loops or something, it'll give you a, an alert box saying, hey, this script has become unresponsive or something like that, right? So, um, so anyway, this plus plus is an operator that's kind of a little convenience thing, and essentially it just means add one to this variable, okay? And, you know, we could write this this way too. We could say, you know, I equals I plus one, you know, okay? So we're going to set the value of I, I equals, and then it's going to be equal to itself plus one, right? And, and you know, you could even shorten that to uh, plus equals one, right? I, and this, this means just add the value here. So if you wanted to count with twos or threes, you could do that. But, you know, typically what people do is you want to count, you know, in whole numbers in one. So they have this convenient operator here, plus plus, right? So anyway, let's go over it again. Var i equals zero. That's our initializer. Let's count while i is less than five. And then let's add one to i with each, you know, loop or each time we, we execute the code block here. So maybe in the code block, just to keep things simple, we'll use the console and we'll type in, you know, hello, right? And then I'm going to go to the browser here and refresh. And it says hello. Now in Chrome, it doesn't print five hellos since it sees the same value was repeated it just you know to save space in the console it just tells you the number of times this happened and it, and it happened five times right so uh, so essentially you know it counted you know zero to four right because four is less than five and then when I when we added one to I and it went from four to five then you know f five is no longer less than five it's equal to five so so we get five counts if we wanted to see the value for i, we could also log that. So I'll use the plus sign here to combine the variable i with the string hello, right? Let's repeat it. Oh, look, and there it says hello 0 through 4. Okay, so there's a quick example. I keep hitting save in the browser and it um, opens up that box. But uh, anyway, so, so there we go. Let's do another one, right? Um, so another way to loop through, through, um, uh, you know, some objects here is we can use a for in loop. And I'll do that in a moment, okay? Let's do one more thing here with this. So imagine that, you know, we had this loop, but we actually wanted to loop through the names array. So what I'm going to do here is this. I'm going to say, you know, for var i equals zero. And remember, the first item in the array is zero. And then, you know, if we had one, two, three, four items, we could put a number four here. But, you know, if the number of items in the array was going to change, it would be better for us to put, you know, names.length, right? And remember in the last video, I, I got the length or the, the number of items, the count of the items in the array by doing names.length, right? So with this setup, we can loop you know, a number of times equal to the number of items in this array, right? And if we want to see the, the, the name of the item here, we can say names bracket i. And if you remember in the last video, if you put the name of your array and follow it with the square brackets and the index, then you'll get the item at that index, right? Let's give it a test. So here you can see I've got, you know, a, b, c, d, right? And they're all printed out. So uh, so that works pretty good. So objects, now, they don't have an index, right? So we can't access items here unless we have their name, okay? Or, or can we, right? Let's do another for loop. So this is going to be a little bit different, okay? Maybe I'll put it above the last one. And this one will look very similar. We'll say for curly brackets. And in the, uh, the parentheses here, when we set up the condition, we're going to do it a little bit differently. We're going to say for var 
Um, and you know, you can use any variable here. I'm going to do key in, right? And we'll do names array first, okay? And uh, what this means is it means loop once for each key value in this object. And arrays count as objects, okay? So, you know, I call this a JavaScript object, but this is also kind of an object in software terms, okay? Even though it's an array type object, right? And then what does this do? Let's, let's console log that, right? And let's say, you know, you know what I'll do is I'll, I'll put key, and we'll put the key value there, and then we'll put value over here with names bracket key like that, okay? And we'll take a look at what happens. Oh, look at that. Let me, uh, let me move this up a little bit so we can compare the console outlet output with the, um, I guess I can't quite get that high enough there to see them all, but maybe like this. I guess we could see them here. Um, so this time when we're looping, JavaScript sees that names is an array, and we're saying for the key value, and key is really just a variable, like this could have been I or it could have been any name. You know, and I'll even try it with that I and I here, and then when I refresh, oh wait, I got a problem. It says key is not defined, right, because I, I left key here. Let's put an I in there too, right, and then let's refresh it again. Yeah, so, you know, we can use any variable name here, but essentially this, this type of loop is, is looping through each item in this object, right? And since they're array, it's an array object, then the key value is the index, okay? How does that work with objects like this, right? Like regular JavaScript objects, right? Well, what if I do this? What if I say for... you know, uh, var i in, let's actually do key this time, right, in object, and then down here, you know, I'll, uh, I'll just copy that to save myself some typing, right, and uh, we'll change these to key and key, oops, Okay, so first we'll see these, and then we'll see the second one, and then we'll see the third one, right? So uh, so here we go. This is, uh, you know, key is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then we see the names A, B, C, D, and then here the key is the, uh, the property name, right? So that's the property name, and then the value is the value, but with an object, oops, I mean, I, I, put, I put names there, yeah, right? Um, with an object, we can also get the value from an object with the square brackets if you put the key name in it, like that. Let me actually fix that, right? Oh, there we go. So here we go. We got age, name, and shoe size, and then the value shows up here from object bracket key, right? So that's another way to get at the item. And what's nice about this is, there I did it again with the save button. What's nice about this with the, uh, with the for in loop is that if you add a name, right, to the array, like, you know, if I push another name in there, and then I say, you know, Ed, right? And maybe if I add another, you know, another value here, right, or another property name and value pair into the object, then when I, I refresh my code or my, my, my browser window here and, and refresh the code running in, in the console, then you can see that now ed is part of the list and id is now part of the list, right? And I didn't have to change the code in the for loop at all, right? And that's really the beauty of this, right? So, you know, if we can find ways where JavaScript can search out the things that we want in more abstract terms without us having to name every single item, then our programs run pretty smooth and they kind of adapt themselves to situations that 
come up in the future when things change, right? So anyway, I hope that's useful, and we'll be using that in the Parse tutorial. So, um, you know, let me know if that helps you guys out, and thanks for watching.